We're going to start with the French manicure. I'm going to get Gary's smile after a dear, sweet Gary. He had the most brightest, beautiful smile that you'd ever seen. So when he passed away, we did rename our white to be the brightest white. Now this is a perfect example. This looks like clear sitting on top of, I don't know, it looks creamy. You're going to see the difference in the importance of mixing your gels. So I'm taking a flat influent and I'm scraping along the bottom around the jar. This was perfect. I couldn't have asked for a better jar. Because you're going to see the difference this makes. So now I'm folding the white and now the pigment that had settled to the bottom is looking like Gary's teeth. Bright white. Actually, the original name, it was called Bright White and Gary had named it. So, we felt it was in his honor to rename it after him. So now you see the difference of how pretty and bright that white is compared to when the jar was open. So this is the importance of mixing your gels. And if you don't, all you're doing is you're not getting, first of all, a true color, and second of all, you'll get issues with the gel. Now, I'll get a few more bubbles. First of all, they're large, and I can break them, but I can work around them also. So now I just wipe my implement. felt like I, I went around my jar when I was flipping it. Okay, now I'm going to utilize our number four flat brush. That's what I use to make my French line. Again, um, total choice of your own. If you like the Filbert brush or if you have another favorite brush, Okay, again, I'm just pressing between getting the sizing out because these were new brushes. And even if it wasn't, I would still be refreshing, uh, freshening them up, um, getting any excess gel that might have sat in them. Okay, I let that. I want a nice crisp edge on the brush, which I've got. I'm going to go into the gel. I've got a longer nail, so I have a little bit more. I want to offload in the center of the nail using Deb's natural smile line as my end point. So halfway in between there, pull to the free edge, work my way back to Deb's natural smile line and going past it. The reason I want to go past it is I want to allow Deb time for regrowth. And, and if I put it right up just to her natural smile line as her nail grows, we're going to see that line. Now, again, this layer of gel is not thick enough. All I'm doing is trying to work out my smile line. This layer of gel is not thick enough to cure. If I was put it in the lamp, I'd get craters and holes because there's not enough photo initiator in this layer of gel to cure. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with more gel, offload in the center. 
hold of the free edge and work my way up to the smile line that I've created. Now, this doesn't mean if you're one of those ones that likes to swipe first, go ahead and swipe. Nothing is stopping you, but then you want to pull the gel down. So you can go ahead and swipe first. I'm getting right in there, so I want to have to get that gel off of you. Um, my orange wood stick. And on this white, you're really going to see where I was talking about the gel pooling um, before. And you can see along here. And remember, there's two coats, two curing coats of this gel. And again, I would be doing the switch off method because this white is considered a color. And color gels cure for three minutes each, but we give them a total curing time. So now I'm angling my brush, going in and removing that area that's pooling. It's like painting a wall. The first coat will cover, the second coat will cover all the shadows. So any of these shadows in here will be gone on our final coat. Okay, Deb, let's put that in the lamp for three minutes. Okay, so Deb, you're done. And now... Another lump. Offload in the center of that smile. And then work my way. The reason I don't want to go right to the smile line is I don't want to lump at the smile line. Now again, some people do that and it's their choice. Whatever works for you. Okay, Deborah, you're moving. All right, I'm gonna go in a little bit more on this side. And if for some reason you didn't like the smile line that you created, it doesn't mean you can't change it at this point either. Oops. along the bottom, my angled brush, just to take that leveling off. Okay. So we're going to put this into the light again. Okay, so Deb's done with that. Okay, so we've got two coats of white, and now it's going to be the application of the clear. So a lump, offload in the center of the nail plate, pull to the free edge. and work your way back to the cuticle. And I'm gonna go in for more gel for my second layer. I want a nice little lump. Okay, uh, floating in the center, pulling to the free edge.
and nice long brush strokes. Very, very light touch is what you're working with. Angle my brush because I don't want a thick free edge. But now what I do want, I want to go around because I see that. Okay, and sometimes that's just enough time to let itself level. Okay, I still see that I don't have a very straight line. I have a straight line over here using the light, but right here I kind of have a little. So I'm taking the gel on the brush, touching the gel on the nail, and I'm just making a tail. And I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to try and exaggerate it without causing too many issues. What you want to make sure is that you don't have a lump in between um, the French and the natural nail. You want to make sure. And I want to go in. And the best critic is yourself to assess your own nail you want to go down the barrel you want to make sure that your your sides are even with gel and on this side I've got a little too much gel right there and like I say you want to utilize that light and I also want to make sure that I've got a nice even C curve. I just want to take this up a little wee bit. I want to give it just a tad bit more of a curve. Okay, and I think we're ready, Deb. So this will cure one minute's time into the lamp. And if you're ever having an issue, that you can't get that perfect, you can flip the hand over. Because the gel is self-leveling, it's going to settle and give a nice C curve. Okay, let's put that in the lamp. Okay, so Deb, you're done. Okay, so that's the finished product of the French manicure. What we're gonna do now is, because we have to remove the sticky residue, And then I always find with a sculpt, especially with a sculpt, not so much with the tip, but I always find with the sculpt, you want to go in and you might have a final shape to do just because once you get the white on, you really see what your nail looks like, your finished product. So it, it's not always, this was, you know, maybe not necessary that we had to, but just to show that sometimes you do. And then of course, we're gonna go in because again, it's a UV soak off gel, which is porous. So we wanna protect it from the everyday living, the dirt and grime. And that's our finished product of a French manicure.